Jake Ludington here at HPE Discover, and I'm here with Todd DiCapua. And performance engineering is something that a lot of people are talking about, but can you break down what exactly is that? Absolutely. So performance engineering does have a lot of different meanings to a lot of different people. But when you think about performance engineering, there's a lot of different factors that play in. And really, I think if we go to like your end user, right? I mean, I'm sure you're an end user of a lot of different mobile apps and websites and things like that. When things don't work, I mean, it could be a functional issue, it could be a UI or UX issue, maybe it's something with security, or maybe it's something, you know, just other poor experiences. But ultimately, performance, if it's not working, well, how is it that we can, as an organization or as a group of people, how can we start building performance in early so that we know that it's not going to fail once we get out to our end users? So again, thinking about performance engineering, that's where you can kind of get started. And this is something that, that I guess a lot of people care about, or at least you surveyed a lot of people. And yeah, that's right. So we surveyed almost a year ago now, uh, 400 different companies. And it was interesting. One of the key findings that we had was over 70% of the respondents said that performance engineering is something that is in growing importance for them today. And so what kind of tools are out there for people to test their performance? I mean, I know that there are uh, kind of automated tools to like, you could test how many users are hitting an app at once, like sure. thousands at a time and things like that. But like, what kinds of tools are out there that, that you recommend? So uh, it's funny because I often don't like to have the tools conversation. Um, we can talk about a lot of the different tools. There's all kinds of different load tools like you were suggesting that can drive different types of traffic. Um, the network becomes a major issue. So thinking about how do you recreate that network? How do you optimize your application to perform well across all these different kind of conditions? Again, if you're on a train with a different type of condition or if you're driving your car, um, you know, some of the recent manufacturers, again, how is it that they're able to capture these conditions while you're on the Autobahn doing 120 miles an hour, but your car still needs to stay connected? So again, are there tools that can help you in that area? Absolutely. Um, when it comes to performance engineering, the first place I'd like to start is kind of what are those practices? What is it, you know, how is it the people? What is that culture of the organization? And, and where are they right now in their journey? Um, because that becomes probably the more important piece to start with and then kind of work in the tools. But yeah, in HPE we've got uh, a lot of different capabilities in this space. Uh, there's also a lot of other players in the market that also offer a lot of pieces. So what I like about the Hewlett Packard Enterprise capabilities is we're very open. So again, being able to integrate in what you have already into these core capabilities and allow you to succeed. Okay, and then you, but you do actually have a, a website that allows you to do some performance testing, right? Absolutely. So we call it HPE Insights. It takes about 30 seconds to submit your request. In less than five minutes, you're going to get an email back with a link to your results report. Oftentimes, these things are 20 pages or more in length, huge value. But if you go out to hpe.com slash software slash insights, you'll go ahead and be able to get to that form, submit your request, and get your results. And how is that different than, say, like Yslow or, or the Google tools that are out there today? Right. So if you think about, like, yeah, you know, slow or page speed or speed test, any of those types of capabilities, they all offer a little bit something different. What you're going to find if you go out to Insights is the results that you're going to get uh, give you a lot more depth. Um, part of what uh, we also include are application or automation optimization recommendations. So these are code level recommendations based on about 27 different rules that will give you those code fixes that you need to make your site, make your mobile app go at least 40% faster. So it actually, it actually goes in and looks at the code and tells you how to optimize. Absolutely. I mean, do you need another tool to buy? Do you need another tool to pay maintenance on? No. What you need are results. So again, if I can give you these types of results in 30 seconds, it's probably a pretty good you know, value prop for you because how much did I charge you? I, it sounds like you're charging me nothing. It's free. Yeah. And then uh, you're, you're so passionate about performance engineering that you also wrote a book, I understand. It's true, man. So uh, myself and my co-author, Shane Evans, um, had the opportunity to write a book with O'Reilly. Uh, it's titled Effective Performance Engineering. We just released it yesterday. Um, but yeah, absolutely you know, thrilled to be able to work with O'Reilly Media. Again, I view them as kind of the premier technology publishing group. And to be able to have that be my first big book, perfect. And so, uh, are, is, is kind of the, the highlights of that book, are they if, um, many of the things that we just talked about here? It's a part of it. Of course, we go a lot deeper, but the idea is for whether you're a technologist, whether you're in the business, uh, whether you've been a performance tester for years and you want to know how do I go into performance engineering, 
but you know, what, what are more about the culture? What more about these proven practices? You know, how can I get the results? We've also got a few different case studies that we weave through the book as well. So it should be a great resource for people. It's um, a six by nine inch format. It's uh, only 111 pages long, so you can easily stuff it in your backpack. You can read it on an easy flight. And then there's there's one more thing, because you don't have enough going on. I know, right? Uh, I, you have a site called Tech Beacon. Yes. That is, tell me about it, because I, I don't think I know much about it at all. So about a year ago, um, you know, we kind of had this daunting task of, you know, how is it that from an HPE thought leadership perspective, what more can we do in the market to create great content and share it with practitioners, basically targeting that IT hero. From that uh, was born uh, techbeacon.com and uh, out there what you'll find are just tons of articles. We're publishing probably about two a day right now. Wow. We have over 400,000 visitors a month. Um, but again, 95% of the contributors are practitioners, just like myself, um, not HPE employees. So again, great content. It's information that as you're thinking about things like cloud, like agile, like performance, like mobile, you know, what is it that other people are doing? What are those thought leaders saying? And gets you into an opportunity. It's also a way that you could go out and contribute if you would like as well. So, so if I had some expertise in performance engineering, I could go contribute articles? or at the, any of these other types of you know, hot topics of the day. And you know, oftentimes people say to me, well, I'm not a great writer. Well, you know, we've got six of the best um, technology uh, editors working there. So again, they can help make you a great writer. And, and as, as a writer, I know that uh, everybody needs a great editor. Absolutely.